we just got massive leaks for Samsung's upcoming Galaxy XR headset. Yes, the final version of Project Muhan. Over the past year, creators like Marcus Brownlee, Cass and Cherry XR, and Android Authority all got to test early prototypes of Project Muhan, and things have changed a lot. Now we're looking at the finished product with new renders, new specs, new software, and even full hardware details from the leaks. So in this video, I'm going to be comparing everything that's changed since the early demos whilst discussing everything we currently know about the finalized product. So let's get into it. Prototype versus the final model. When the first wave of creators tried Project Muhan at the beginning of the year, what we saw was an unfinished prototype. Some features didn't work, the UI was pretty basic, and certain sensors were disabled for the demo. But fast forward to now with the Galaxy XR, it's officially branded, built to ship, and running a full optimized OS called One UI XR. This is Samsung's version of Android XR, made in partnership with Google and Qualcomm. The earlier version was about showing the potential of the product, but this version is about delivering the complete user experience. With dual controls, refined comfort, full Gemini AI integration, and Google Play Store access right out of the box. So let's talk about the design evolution. The design has definitely evolved, but the DNA of it is still there. The new Galaxy XR definitely keeps that Vision Pro aesthetic, the curved metallic fronts, smooth fabric edges, and magnetic light shields. But every single detail has been upgraded. The weight has officially dropped to 545 grams, which is lighter than the Vision Pro, and the rear battery pack is now more refined, using a detachable braided USB-C cable so you can swap batteries or use larger packs. The face padding is softer, the strap is adjustable with a rear tension dial, and overall the device just looks looks premium and ready to ship, rather than looking like a dev kit. So let's talk about display and visual fidelity. Samsung didn't just stop at looks, they went all out with the display quality. Inside of 4K micro OLED panels, delivering a ridiculous 29 million pixels total. That's about 6 million more than the Apple Vision Pro. That means sharper visuals, richer contrasts, and truer blacks. Which makes sense coming from Samsung, the company that makes the best OLED TVs in the world. Each eye gets around 4,000 pixels per inch with near perfect color calibration and enough brightness to handle HDR and daylight pass through. Let's talk about the hardware power and processing. Performance wise, this thing runs the Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2 chip co-developed with Google and Samsung. It's the same chip that we've seen in the Quest 3, the Quest 3S, and the Pico 4 Ultra. But this means 20% faster CPU, 15% stronger GPU, and hardware level support for mixed reality, AI interface, and eye-tracked vovetid rendering. This chip can easily handle 4.3K resolution per eye, real-time spatial mapping, and low latency pass-through all at the same time. And since it's going to be running Android XR, it's fully scalable. So this exact same performance will likely appear in future Google, HTC, and Lenovo headsets. Now it's time to talk about the tracking cameras and sensors. This headset is loaded with sensors. 12 in total. There's six cameras on the front, two cameras on the bottom for tracking hand movements, a depth sensor, a depth sensor, a depth sensor, a depth sensor, I can't say it. <laughs> a depth sensor at the top near your forehead and four eye tracking cameras inside the device. Eye tracking uses infrared and AI to predict precise gaze movement for accurate voviation and menu navigation. Voice recognition also returns using multiple microphones around the frame to isolate your voice in noisy environments. And yes, unlike the Vision Pro, this headset ships with dual 6 DOV controllers in the box featuring analog sticks, haptics, and full motion tracking. That's a huge deal for gamers. Something that most creators didn't get to test in the prototype stages. Now performance will probably likely be similar to what we've seen with the Quest 3, but the fact that it has higher resolutions than the Quest, we could see a drop in performance. We'll have to wait and see and I'll definitely test it when I get my hands on. But now let's talk about the software, the One UI XR plus Gemini integration. This is where Samsung and Google really differentiate themselves. The Galaxy XR runs One UI XR, built on top of Google's brand new Android XR platform. The interface is clean, minimal, and incredibly fast, with floating app windows that you can freely resize, just like Marcus showed in his 
preview of the prototype. But now Gemini AI Live is baked directly into the OS. You can ask Gemini to open apps, organize your windows, or even interact with what you see, all because it's multimodal. For example, if you're in Google Maps, you can just say, hey Gemini, take me to Tokyo, and it navigates and zooms automatically. You can also use circle to search in real life, hold a button or pinch your finger around objects, and instantly get Google results inside the headset. This is Android XR done right. It's natural, voice-driven, and deeply integrated with Google's AI tools. So let's discuss audio comfort and battery life. So it's obvious that Samsung clearly listened to early feedback. The Galaxy XR now features dual two-way spatial speakers, one woofer, and one tweeter on each side, giving it richer, more layered sound than the Vision Pro. It's tuned for directional 3D audio, so voices and objects really sound like they're around you. Battery life sits around two hours, which is pretty standard for most portable XR devices, and maybe pushing 2.5 for media consumption, matching the Vision Pro. But unlike Apple, Samsung's battery connects via a braided USB-C detachable cable, meaning you can hot swap your power banks on the go. Between that, better balance, and improved face padding, this headset should be far more comfortable for longer sessions, whether you're working, gaming, or watching movies. Now let's discuss price and launch window. According to leaks, pre-orders open October the 15th, with the official reveal event happening around October the 21st to the 22nd, just before the holiday season. Pricing is rumored to be around $1,800 USD, positioning it directly in between the MetaQuest Pro and the Apple Vision Pro, because the device is still a high-end device, but still half the cost of the Apple Vision Pro. So let's discuss competition and marketing position. So where does this device actually sit? The Apple Vision Pro will still win on apps polished and eye tracking precision, and the MetaQuest 3 will still remain the budget-friendly gaming option for people. As well, Steam is about to release their brand new headset, which you can check out in my latest videos. But the Galaxy XR is the first first true Android-based competitor to all of these products, combining premium hardware, AI-powered software, and a full ecosystem supporting Samsung and Google. It's basically the Galaxy S1 moment for spatial computing. So to recap everything, Samsung Galaxy XR takes everything that we saw in the earlier prototypes at the beginning of the year and upgrades it into a polished, production-ready headset, sharper displays, better sensors, full Android XR integration, Gemini AI, dual controllers, and a sub $2,000 price tag. If the rumors are believed to be true, it could be releasing this month. And if this is how Android XR begins, the competition in 2026 for the XR space is going to be extremely exciting. So make sure to subscribe to stay up to date with the latest news. If you enjoyed this video, smash the like and comment below. Will you be buying this headset? Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Lordsy VR. Have a fantastic day and peace.